Hello, welcome back to a new chapter. We're going to start a few chapters in the module on investments, and this is probably one of the most popular topic when it comes to personal finance. In this video, we're going to look at different types of investment firms and also help you determine which type of investment firm is most appropriate for you. Uh, importantly, we're going to look at some historic return and help you identify the recent return characteristics of different types of investments. Um, very important is about diversification and how you can achieve diversification with the money that you have. And we'll also talk about the concept of asset allocation. Uh, again, don't worry if you don't know what it is, we're going to go over all these terms in details. Finally, we're going to help you develop and implement an investment strategy so that you can achieve your financial goal. First, let's take a look at terminology. Investment worlds is full of jargons and they can be confusing and intimidating. So understanding the investment terms will help you become a wise consumer and a prudent investor. First and foremost, do not let the jargon deter you from understanding what it really means. The textbook provides a lot of terms and it is useful for you to take a look at them and really feel comfortable understanding what each of them means. For example, the term asset, which is a simple word, but in finance, it means stocks, bonds, mutual fund, and most importantly, real estate. In investment, we oftentimes make a distinction between real asset, which are real estate or a car, um, and ACT, for example, those are real assets versus financial assets. So the term security refers to financial assets. So financial assets are stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Again, if you do not know which of the, uh, what each of these means, We'll go over them in detail as well. In addition to individual securities, we oftentimes talk about portfolio, your portfolio. A portfolio simply means that you have more than one thing in there. So if you have two stocks, you have a portfolio. If you have a stock and a bond, you have a portfolio. If you have a stock, and a mutual fund, you have portfolio. If you have two mutual funds, you have a portfolio. So that's all that portfolio means. It means more than one, so it's a collection. We also talk about execution. Executing a trade means that you're buying and selling. Again, security means anything can be, you're buying and selling a stock, you're buying and selling a bond, you're buying and selling a mutual fund, and so forth. Another very important term in investment is asset allocation. Asset allocation simply means how you divide your money amongst different types of investment. So if you put, for example, 60% of your money in stock, 40% of your money in bonds, that is one form of asset allocation. If you want to put uh, half your money, so 50% of your money in stock, 50% of your money in mutual fund, that's another type, that is another form of S allocation. So all that S allocation means is how you divide up your, invest, your money. Another very important tool is rebalancing. Rebalance means that you are over time, how you, the, your asset allocation, meaning how you divide your money, may have changed. And in order to go back to your original allocation, so this is your plan as allocation. So you, in order to go back to what you originally planned, you may have to sell some asset and buy other assets. So again, asset here means stocks, bonds, mutual funds. So you may have to do some trading, some buying and selling so that you can go back to your original allocation. Your original allocation, so to do that, the term is called rebalance. It's a very important part of your investment strategy. So in this just one slide, we learn about S allocation. We also learn about rebalance. Those are very important things to keep in mind. Now that you're ready to go ahead with your investment, let's take, about, let's take a look at where can you go. 
So there are different types of investment firms. Um, the first is what we call a full service brokerage firm. Uh, full service means they provide all services related to investment. Uh, most of them typically have in-person, meaning face-to-face -face investment advice, and they have offices that are close to you. They can execute trade. Again, execute trade means they can buy and sell any securities that you want. In addition to that, they can also manage your entire portfolio for you. So they can do everything for you. In a food, uh, someone who works in a full service brokerage firm, they earn money by both the commission from trading. So when you buy and sell stock, the brokerage firm earn commission. And if you, if they manage your portfolio for you, they also earn money management fees. So those are two different ways they can make money. Uh, in general, full service brokerage firm is the most expensive and they also give you the most service. Another type of brokerage firm is referred to as a discount brokerage firm. And they have typically have limited location and some of them may only have an online presence. And most of these discount bookage firm allow you to choose the level of service. Uh, a lot of them will have free educational materials online. Some of them have human advisor that you can talk to over the phone uh, or via Zoom, uh, or they may even have face-to-face -face service. And then they have robo advisor, which are automatic advisors. These are typically a fee for service. So once again, you can choose the level of um, service that you want and also how much you want to pay for them. You can, you can execute your trade yourself. So using the online tool. So typically they, they do still charge a commission, but they are much, much lower uh, than a full service firm. So the commissions are much lower. Some firms even waive the commission. And the way that they earn their revenue is still from commission, but they sometimes, as I said, they also have commission-free products. So discount broker tend to be a lot less expensive. So this is more of a, they allow you to do a do-it-yourself DIY approach to investment. And you can also choose the level of, um, investing and management that you want to do on your own. You can think of a full service broker as a contractor, a general contractor. If you want to some home improvement work done, you tell the contractor what you want. They come in, they will do everything for you. Uh, a discount brokerage firm is more similar to a home improvement store. You can go there um, and select and buy the product yourself. You can choose which which part you want to do yourself, and then you can hire individuals to do the parts that you don't want to do. So that's the main difference between a full service brokerage firm and a discount brokerage firm. Notice that both of them are called brokerage firms. So they are brokers. They make their money by trading. Uh, in addition to brokerage firms, they are also financial planners. There are some financial planners that provide advice only. They do not execute trade. So what they do is they'll create a plan for you and then you can take the plan to either a full service brokerage firm or a discount brokerage firm. Most commonly, uh, people who use a financial planner will use a discount brokerage firm. They will, the financial planner will charge an advising fee, but because they don't execute trade, they don't earn commissions. It is not as clear cut because some financial brokers are also financial planners, particularly brokers in a full service brokerage firm. So if the financial planner also executes trade for you, he's a broker and he also earns commission. So is uh, for you as an, as a consumer and an investor, it's important for you to know which one, which type of these firms works best for you. Now, before we can decide which investment firm is best for you, we have to introduce yet another concept. This concept is passive versus active investment. 
passive versus active investment is not a dichotomy, it's not black and white. Rather, this is a spectrum, and it describes how much daily management and analysis you do on your own. So let's take a look at an example. Here's a very common and simple passive investment strategy. So in this passive investment strategy, you only need to perform three steps. Step one, you decide on your S allocation, meaning what percentage of your investment, meaning your money, you put into stock versus bonds versus short-term investment that we talk about, such as CDs or government uh, TBUs. So that's step number one. Step number two, you use a broad index mutual fund. So this broad index fund will be your stock. And then you choose a government bond index fund. So this is your bonds. And then you use a market money market fund for the short-term security. So once you decided on your asset allocation, you simply use three mutual funds, each representing stocks, bonds, and short-term securities. Finally, you need to rebalance. So rebalance one year. This is probably the most challenging of passive investment is to rebalance it on your own. Because when a portfolio goes, goes out of balance, it means that some investment is earning a higher return than other investment. So you actually end up selling investments that has increased in value and buying investment that has decreased in value. This is very counterintuitive, but that's how you go back to the original S allocation. And this is the most challenging for individual investor to do. But this is the three simple basic steps for a passive investment uh, approach. So once again, step one, S allocation. Step two, use mutual fund to implement your X allocation. And then step three is to rebalance. So as you can see, passive investment is relatively easy to do. What about active investment? Active investment, as the name implies, requires a lot more active participation. So it takes a lot, it requires a lot more analysis and it also take, takes a lot more day-to-day -day management. A highly active management or an actively managing a portfolio is actually a full-time job. An active investment approach may include choosing stocks and you may identify stocks that are temporary over under value. And we'll talk about uh, what do we mean by that. Uh, so an overvalued stock means a stock that the current price you determine to be higher than what you think is the true correct price of the stock is. Uh, undervalue means that you think that the current price is less than what the true value of the stock is. And how do you determine the true value of the stock? That is definitely beyond the scope of this class. Um, if you are interested in investment, I, I would recommend that you go read an investment uh, focus book or uh, take an investment course. Uh, another approach to active investment besides selecting stock is to change your asset allocation in anticipation of short-term fluctuation in the market. So you may have people, you may have heard people talk about the market is overvalued and it's due for a correction or the market is undervalued, it's due for a run up. So you will change your asset allocation to, uh, in response to that. Um, I would just say that timing the market is extremely difficult. Choosing stock is also choosing stock that are under and over values are also extremely difficult. I have done research on um, mutual fund managers and money manager, and uh, in, in addition to my own research, there are a lot of research out there that also shows that overall, in the long run, active management do not outperform passive investment. So. Um, just want the, your, uh, you to be aware that even though it's very tempting, it's not easy to be successful in, in active management. 
For individual investors, a lot, some investor will hire money manager or financial advisor to actively manage their portfolio fully. So what that means is that um, the, this requires the least effort from the investor. The investor don't have to do anything at all. However, this is also the most costly option in terms of fees and commission that you pay to the money manager. Uh, some investors use robo-advisor. Uh, these are algorithms that brokerage firm has developed um, and they make recommendations, but the investor will actually have to do, or the consumer will have to do the trading themselves. So the robo-advisor will give you recommendation, trading recommendation, but you will be the person who execute the trade. In a, uh, however, uh, a money manager will execute the trade on your behalf. You don't have to do anything. As I said earlier, empirical research find no evidence that active investment outperform passive investment when you take into account the fee and trading costs that portfolio managers make. So now that you have a deep understanding of what investment firms do and also what services they provide, you can then make an informed decision of which type of brokerage firm is uh, most appropriate for you. Be honest with yourself because this is important. Ultimately, this is your money. Do you need to talk to someone in person? Uh, for a lot of investors, it is important and valuable to talk to someone. Um, this is particularly true when the market is volatile, when the market is going up or, the, or is going down. On the other hand, some people find it stressful to talk to someone who is trying to sell them products. So if you want if you are someone who feel more comfortable to have someone face to face to talk to then a full service brokerage firm will be appropriate for you if you feel that talking to someone with the understanding that they're trying to sell your product makes you stressful you uh, a discount brokerage firm will be more appropriate another thing to consider is fees and also the minimum investment number amount. You want to start early. We talk about that in retirement savings. So you want to be able to um, invest with a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars. And that is important for low minimum investment amount. Fees are particularly important. Uh, fees can add up very quickly. They significantly reduce your return. So the best way is to, to choose the type of accounts that has a minimum investment amount that works for you. So if they have an initial amount, for example, of $500 and $1,000 to open an account and allow you to then buy additional amount in $100, $500, that makes it a lot easier for you to save and invest. Finally, you want to look at what types of product do they offer. Um, do they only offer their own products or do they and do they offer products that are commission free? So commission is another cost is a fee against you. So if they offer commission free product, that is advantageous to you, uh, particularly if you're buying mutual funds, look at how many funds do they offer? So those are all useful things. In addition, convenience, that is, um, again, if it's difficult to invest, difficult to save, you won't do it. So ask, look at all the services that they offer. Do they allow direct transfers? Do they have online trading? Do they have um, mobile apps? So are those things important to you? Sometimes if you, have, you work for a company and they have a 401k plan, then using the same firm that manages that your retirement account may be convenient. But if they charge a high fee, then it may not be worthwhile. So it's trade-off between convenience and cost. How important are online mobile and mobile apps? So once again, we talk about security. So online safety is very important. I mentioned mobile app. That is particularly problematic because if you if you if the uh, user design is to encourage you to trade more frequently, that is not good. So once again, remember that this brokerage firm make money 
on commission. So the more you trade, the more commission they make. And sometimes there are firms that may actually advertise commission free, but they're still making money off your trade. So remember that the firms have to make money somehow. And the firms that advertise commission free, they make money on what we call bid ask spread, meaning just like a used car dealer, they buy the stock from you at a slightly lower price, then they sell the stock to someone else and they make the money and they make the profit in the bid ask spread. So the price between what they buy from you and what they sell to someone else. And they can only make money if you trade. So uh, excessive trading can be hazardous to your uh, overall investment strategy. You want to take into account potentially some other services that may be useful to you. For example, some brokerage firm also provide banking service. They may um, include credit card. They can, is um, one-stop shopping that we talked about earlier when we talk about banks. Uh, in fact, some banks will provide investment service. So ask yourself, is such a one-stop shop important to you? And then you want to also ask yourself, among those services, which ones are the most important? Before you decide to open an account with a brokerage firm, you, it's useful for you to check the history of them. Uh, this There's a link to FINRA, um, and you can search for the name of the brokerage firm or an individual broker uh, to make sure that they don't have any outstanding judgment against them. So what are some things to watch out for when you work with a brokerage firm? Uh, just like any sales situation, do not uh, work with a, a, a broker that tells you, you have to act now, this is a buy of a century, don't miss the boat. Uh, whether or not it's in person, whether it's a phone message or there is a reminder that tell you to trade. Um, another thing is th that if they promise something too good to be true, it usually is. So if they say they have an investment that has a very high return and low risk, then that is a red flag because there's no free lunch. Um, investment that has a high return will typically come with a high risk. We talk, We already talked about excessive trading. Again, if they call you every week or every other week and say, hey, there is a, this is this great new report come out that tells us this is a fantastic investment opportunity. That may be true once or twice, but if it's a continuous basis, that can lead to excessive trading. Once again, remember that they earn commission through trading. The best strategy for investing long-term, such as for, uh, for your retirement, is to buy and hold, meaning you buy, you don't sell, you hold on to it. Another big, big red flag is recommend complex strategy that you don't understand. So if you if they use any terms that you don't understand, ask questions. So once again, having taken this course, you are you may not be an expert, but you are a knowledgeable investor. So you are aware of and you have learned most of the important basic terms on investments and personal finance. And when you do that check, on FINRA, we talk about uh, whether or not they have judgment against them. The term is disclosures. So if they have a disclosure, when you do uh, a check for, on them on FIRA's uh, website, that is a definite red flag. Most importantly, just like your credit report, you want to read your account statement. And if all those statements are online, make sure that you make a habit of checking your portfolio and transaction online on a regular basis. Um, if not weekly, minimally monthly, look at your transaction history to make sure that there's no suspicious or unauth unauthorized trading going on. We're gonna end the video here. In the next video, we're gonna take a look in depth more about investments, particularly looking at historic investment, what kind of ex return you can expect and what kind of risk you can expect from investing in various instruments. See you soon.